This game removes the most fundamental mechanic in 2D action games, and somehow that makes it better. It's this willingness to defy tradition and other things that we'll discuss later on that make it unlike anything I've ever played. Despite that, I can't recommend it to everyone, but if it is for you, you'll absolutely love Dandara. What is the most fundamental mechanic in any 2D action game? See if you can figure this out, you've got three seconds. The answer? Run it. Every single 2D action focused game I've played allows the player to run. But what would happen if you took that ability away? Dandara boldly answers this question in an interesting way. And they don't just forsake running, but another element that we see in nearly every game like this. This game removes gravity. And you see, it's in doing this that you suddenly get a fascinating system that would totally fall apart were it not for something that I'll get to in a second. First, we need to talk about how this system actually works. You move around the map by jumping. Jumping. There's a limit to how far you can jump, and you can only jump at certain angles in a straight line. Now you see these white patches here? This is salt, and it's the only place you can jump to. And again, when you're standing, you can't move left and right to adjust. You can only jump from one salt patch to the next. This may seem limiting at first, but upon further inspection you can quickly realize why this is actually a brilliant decision. The lack of gravity along with the ability to jump from the floor to the walls to even the ceiling opens up the level in ways that I've never seen in a game like this. The entire screen turns into a potential platform instead of just being the ground below you littered with hazards and pits. It's in this way that what seems like a limitation actually turns into an opportunity for interesting and unique level designs. This is aided by the innate ability to automatically snap to salt patches when aiming, so you don't have to precisely aim every single jump in the game. This feels strange, even a bit awkward at first, but you'll pretty quickly get used to it. And when you do, you're able to enter this wonderful state of flow where you're barely even thinking before making the precise jumps to dodge enemies, attacks, and hazards. But what really brings all of this together is the speed available to your character. See, this entire system would completely fall apart were it not for that speed. You have to be able to move this quickly because you lack the precision of the traditional left and right movement. However, it's because of this speed and how you can literally fly through these areas that you gain this incredible feeling of flow. I mean, you'll clear some of these sections and you won't even believe that you're the one that just did it. It creates a genuinely remarkable feeling. In fact, a a lot of these sections remind me of Celeste in that way. Not only does Dandara provide a new form of movement that I've never seen before, but that form of movement creates some excellent challenges that feel extremely satisfying to overcome. But there is a critical issue with them that's really gonna bother some people. More on that later. For now, it's important to know that Dandara is a Metroidvania. For the six of you watching this who don't know what that means, a Metroidvania is basically a game where you explore the map and search for upgrades that allow you to explore more of the map. That's about it. A large part of what makes Dandara stand out as a Metroidvania is not just the absence of the ability to run, but how these upgrades change the game. They're not all like this, but some of these upgrades don't just change your character, but how the world functions as well. My favorite example of this is the Rock of Remembrance upgrade. What this thing does isn't immediately clear, however, the game quickly shows you that just by having this thing in your possession, the world itself will act differently. This creates new hazards, closes previously accessible paths, and naturally opens up new ones. I absolutely love this upgrade because most upgrades in games like this, and even some in this game, are very one note. They're effectively keys that unlock a door, but the Rock of Remembrance acts like a switch that completely changes the world. Now, there is another aspect that Metroidvanias are known for that I haven't mentioned yet, and it may be the best part of Dandara, or at least my favorite part, the bosses. Simply put, what makes the bosses of Dandara so special is their ability to implement the platforming that you've learned in their lead up into their encounter. Let's look at the first boss to better explain this. So when you start the game, you learn that you can jump to these salt patches, right? This will gradually increase in complexity as most games do. You'll find moving platforms, smaller salt patches, you get the point. The next thing you'll encounter on the lead up to this boss are the enemies that launch orbs of light at you. Again, these are introduced slowly and gradually and you'll eventually be fighting multiple of these enemies while dodging floor hazards or on moving platforms. There's also another version of this same enemy that charges you instead of using projectiles. The last thing you encounter are these blue enemies who launch shockwaves that travel across the ground. By the time you finally encountered the boss, you already know about a few things. You know how platforming and movement work, and you're probably getting pretty good at it. You also know three different types of attacks and projectiles, the orbs of light, the charging enemies, and finally the shockwaves. Now it's with all of this knowledge in tow that you encounter 
encounter a boss who forces you to use this knowledge while also bringing his own tricks to the table. He'll summon enemies that charge at you, he'll use shockwaves that travel across the floor, and he'll even launch his own orbs of light. In the second phase, this is taken a step further as you're now forced not just to dodge the attacks, but to actively platform while you do. This all leads us back to that speed from earlier. None of this would even work if you weren't able to dodge and react quickly to oncoming threats, but because of how snappy and quick your character is able to move, the game is able to throw these overwhelming gauntlets at you with full confidence that you'll make it to the other end. Just like how I have confidence that you won't see more of my videos if you don't press this funny red button. I won't say too much more about the bosses other than this. The one I just described is probably the least fun in the game, which is saying something because this boss is honestly a masterclass in game design, but the rest of the bosses are just that good. So all of this may sound great, and it is, but if you're a certain type of person, you're probably not gonna like this game despite everything I've said so far. This is because Dandara is both challenging and punishing. Crucially, however, those are not the same thing. Let me explain. Challenge in games is all about how many mistakes you're allowed to make until you reach whatever the condition for failure is. In a game like Super Mario, failure would be when you fall down a pit or run out of health. Punishment, on the other hand, is what happens after you meet the condition for failure. So going back to Mario, the punishment for failure is being sent back to the checkpoint and having to redo everything from the checkpoint to your place of failure. What makes a game hard is its combination and balancing of these two aspects. A game that resets you to the start when you fail, but is also easy enough for a toddler to clear on their first attempt, wouldn't be called hard. Equally, a game that requires a ton of precision jumps that allows you to rewind every single time you make a mistake to the moment before it it happened also wouldn't be that hard. Although I do admit I think I'd consider the second game significantly harder than the first. Anyway, we're getting off topic. How does this relate to Dandara? Well, like I said, Dandara does a bit of both. If you couldn't already tell, the game is pretty challenging, and while you can avoid death pretty well thanks to health upgrades and healing items, there are some demanding challenges in here. I would compare it to late game Dark Souls or Celeste. The punishment is what I believe is going to turn a lot of people away, however. Upon failure, you're reset back to the most recent flag or campsite that you rested at. Sometimes this isn't a big deal, but there are situations that some people might find very frustrating because of this mixture of challenge and punishment. Now, I do have to point out that you're able to slightly mitigate this issue by utilizing the difficulty options in the menu, which I think is great. However, regardless of this, there are always going to be times where you'll have to traverse multiple rooms with tough challenges in them every time you die, which could be a breaking point for some. With all of that said, I think this is a relatively minor roadblock and an otherwise exceptional game, and if you can push past it, waiting for you on the other side is a truly remarkable experience that you've probably never seen before. Anyway, there is a game that I can recommend to anyone, and I think it's a game that we all need right about now, so check out this video on the game that anyone can enjoy.